Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to your reading. I hope you guys are doing well. So today I was guided to do a reading getting messages from your spirit guides. I use several oracle decks and at the end I use the tarot cards for a little bit for a little bit of a focus on a focus area, whatever I'm guided to focus on. Before I assign numbers to the group, I just wanted to do a couple of quick announcements. I would like to thank those of you who took advantage of the emergency reading sale that I did last week. And all of you who have followed me over to the extended, I appreciate your guys' ordering the extended readings. And to all of my new subscribers, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you'll find the messages helpful. I do weekly pick a card readings. The main ones I do are messages from your person, as in your love interest, whoever you have, whoever you have romantic feelings for. And how do they feel for you readings? to see how that person is feeling about you currently, and then I usually get pretty in depth. I also do weekly money work and love readings with messages over on my Patreon. The link for that is in the description box down below. And weekly twin flame readings as well. Real quick, I just wanted to address a comment where someone was expressing a bit of confusion and it's a simple answer. If you're confused about a reading that you're watching, then that means that that reading isn't for you. A reading will make sense to you no matter how vague the reader might be appearing to be, if that reading is in fact for you, okay? In truth, we readers, and I'll just speak for myself, I don't always know what the story is being told by the cards. So I can't always wrap it up in a pretty little box with the ribbon on top for you guys and summarize it like a perfect little story. For one thing, it's really not my business, but if your guides and spirit allows me to know the story, that I'm happy to know it. I often ask you guys to leave your stories and share in the comment section down below because I love hearing how the readings resonated for you. It does answer some questions for me and helps me to see what, what story the, the cards were telling. But really, if a reading is resonating for you and meant for you, even general ones, they will be quite personal. So only you can really tell if it's meant for you or not. I once did a personal reading for someone and she asked a very vague question, but I got a very detailed answer that ranged everywhere from family to love life to legalities. And I just read the cards as they came out and as I saw fit and the feedback I got back from her was that the reading completely resonated and that it was exactly her story and it did provide needed guidance to her. And I told her, I don't even know honestly what that reading was about. And she said, I know you don't. <laughs> and I said, okay. And we both agreed that it's okay because it's not my story and it's not my business unless somebody wants to share it with me. And again, sometimes the readings do come out wrapped in a little pretty box with a little pretty bow on top and I know exactly what the story is and I can tell you the beginning, the middle, and the end and isn't it so lovely and easy and simple when that happens? But I sometimes question the readers I watch who are able to put it together that nicely like a little storybook. If it feels too good to be true, sometimes, you know, sometimes it is. So anyways, I just wanted to put that out there. There's no reason for you ever to be confused watching a reader. If the reading is meant for you, it won't be confusing. And on those rare occasions that it is confusing, it's meant, to, it's meant to stimulate you to ask questions for a reason, okay? But again, that's between you and you, you and your guides. I'm just the messenger, and I try to make these fun and interesting, and I have good intentions. So back to the readings. We've got three groups for you to choose from today. There will be extendeds for each of them. The links for the extendeds will be down below. You know, pause the video if you need more time. Remember to use your intuition to pick or go with the one that you're initially first drawn to. 
for group number one. Got this little snow covered house with little fir trees next to it, little snow covered cabin here. And that is group number one. Group number two, we've got this sparkly organite pyramid with all the colors of the of the chakra system. And that is group number two. And for group number three, we have this little pearly doggy. If somebody remembers what this dog is called, what breed this dog is, let me know in the comment section down below. I'm drawing a blank on that. So a little pink tutu. And speaking of little bows and ribbons, she's got a little pink ribbon with a pink gemstone in the middle. That is group number three. So as always, the timestamps will be in the description box down below. Thank you guys for watching. And we're going to get started with group one. Welcome group one. Hope you guys are doing well. Thanks for tuning into your reading. So if you have any questions for your guides, go ahead and think about those. See, and we'll see if we get them answered or some of them answered. Angel spirits and guides, for those who have tuned in for this um, messages reading, we get messages from their guides, please. What messages do group one's guides have for them? First of all, I'm going to use the archetype deck to get and look and see what your guides think about you and how your guides are seeing you right now, okay? Those who have tuned in for group one, how is group one's guide seeing them right now, please? Show me group one, please. For the collective who are watching, group one, what is their energy? We've got the monk and nun. Show me group one's energy, please. According to group one's guides, show me their energy. So we've got God in reverse and we've got the scribe in reverse. So basically how they're seeing you is as that monk nun, your selfless devoted giver, you are somebody that you are somebody that is selflessly devoted and you have a single-minded dedication to spirit. So some of you could be very spiritual, you could pray or meditate regularly, or you just have a really strong spiritual connection. They are also bringing up a couple of your shadow attributes saying that, you know, sometimes you could be a little bit cruel or um, you can use your power to control people or control people and also maybe you alter facts or plagiarize others work so it's a general reading just take it how it resonates so let's see what else your guides have to say to you in light of those messages what else does group one's guides have to say to them please guidance what do group one's guides have for them For those who will watch group one self-control a higher self so your higher self guide is here your higher self basically and this is number 50 which is number five so this is a card of change and even though growth can create stress um, and, and change can create stress it's necessary for your growth so they're guiding you as this is a card of restraint. It's also a card of detachment and composure. It's asking you to hold your composure. We, we can see, I mentioned meditation. This person looks like they're in um, a meditative position. So hold your composure, relax, detach, and restrain yourself. Essentially, this is a card of, of keeping your emotions in check, okay? You're going through a time of transition and change, like a lot of people are right now. Specifically, your guides, your higher selves are saying to be on guard, okay, against being uh, manipulated emotionally by the drama and fear of those around you. So don't let others' drama and fear manipulate you, basically. You know, there's change in the air and there is uncertainty as well. So this could be causing a lot of insecurity and anxiety for you. So your higher self is just asking you to recognize any potential stress around you and choose to be courageous and brave. You know, be that calm in a volatile storm, basically. You know, stay calm, cool, and collected is what they're guiding you to do. So whatever you do, just don't allow yourself to succumb to, 
you know, the seductive or addictive appeal of a lot of drama around you. Um, you know, even though it might be tempting because it's a way of getting rid of your excess stress or adrenaline, the excess anxiety that you might be feeling, you know, it might feel like, you know, you should just go along with stress or, um, or drama to sort of just get that out of your system. But they would, they would like you instead to be constructive, you know, meditate, go for a run, go for a walk, um, work out at the gym, you know, use your anxiety as fuel for physical activity rather than, um, as something that you need to discharge emotionally. And also just protect yourself from, from fear provoking actions of others and, you know, turn off the news if the news is freaking you out or if you're just feeling inundated by anxiety, you know, protect yourself against that. Yeah, it is, it is your higher self saying, you know, yeah, your higher self knows that it's difficult to face the unknown, um, but this is a card of reassurance for you, group one, that no matter what challenges that, that you have to face, you know, you can handle them and you can handle them beautifully. And especially if you just remain relaxed and as detached as possible and stay grounded, okay? So just stay cool is what they're saying with that card. So let's get a message from your guides using the notes from the universe. Can we get a message directly from Group One's guides, please, regarding this reading, please? Love in spite of it all. Before this odyssey ever began, there was you, your best friends, and wide-eyed curiosity among you about who would be the first to leap, the first to forget. The first to forget, the first to kiss, the first to tell, the first to fall, the first to get back up. And the first to remember that it all began with a dare, to love in spite of it all. Is that you, Marigold? The universe, P.S. I remember the glint in your eyes, all three of them. <laughs> Evidently you were um, a three-eyed alien before you came to Earth or something, but that's funny. But love in spite of it all, in spite of the stress and the drama, in the craziness of the world at present, you're being guided to maintain self-control and simply love in spite of it all. Don't succumb to cruelty or, or being manipulative or using your power in a negative way. Don't um, alter the facts to fit your narrative. And don't take from others without giving them credit. Just instead maintain that selfless devotion and that single-minded dedication to spirit, which is, is to love. Spirit is love, right? Stay on that path. Stay dedicated to that. That's what you came here to do. So now from Wisdom of the Oracle, for group one, what do their guides want to tell them? What messages does group one's guides have for them, please? From the Wisdom of the Oracle. We've got the fates, number 17, and it was in reverse, so that's a protection message. So essentially what this card is saying to you, group one, your guides are saying through this card to you that, you know, you're in control of very little right now, okay? So the only thing that you can control really right now is your attitude. So they're just asking you to be mindful of what you can and cannot change. Um, some of you might want to say, the serenity prayer look that one up if you don't know it and just surrender to what you cannot change okay um, and this will help to bring serenity to you so this is your guide's way of understanding that you know it is difficult to go through painful things or to watch others go through painful things and, and to it's, it's hard to understand why painful things happen to good people you know fate is a mystery your guides acknowledge that but what you do with your circumstances and the way that you respond to life's challenges, you know, that is how you rise up to meet your to meet your destiny, okay? Yeah, what we do with our circumstances, the way in which we respond to life's challenges is how we rise up to meet our destiny. So now is one of those times to be aware, you know, of your own powerlessness to change, you know, certain situations. And they're asking you to surrender with acceptance. 
So hang in there, basically. They're saying hang in there. Life will only get better. And, you know, just act as if you believe that. Even if you don't entirely believe that right now, just act as if you believe that life will only get better. Because the only thing, again, that you can control right now is your attitude. Okay? Let's get a card from the Fool's Journey. For Group 1, Angel Spirits and Guides, what messages do Group 1's guides have for them? What other messages does Group 1's guides have for Group 1? Number 18, the joyful. The Fool's Wisdom, enjoy yourself. Okay? Despite it all, you're being asked to enjoy yourself. Don't let it all get you down. I know it's easier said than done sometimes, but the humane thing to do is to enjoy yourself. By being happy, you have more to give to others, and, and others are happy. By watching you be happy, you set a good example. It's also just wise. Optimism, optimism is wisdom, okay? It's not just all pie in the sky, Pollyanna stuff. It is actually wisdom. It is a wise, it is a it is a wise and intelligent tactic. This is about wisdom and joy will see you through, through this difficult time. And from the Dragon Oracle, let's see what else your guides have to say to you. What else do the guides have to say to group one, please? What else do the guides, oh. Golden Solar Dragon helps you stand in your masculine power with wisdom. Let your DNA be reprogrammed and light codes activated. Become an inspired leader. Okay, so regardless if you're a woman or a man watching this, we all have masculine and feminine within us, and we operate the best when those are in balance. So this card is saying, you know, your guides are helping you to stand in your masculine power and to do it with wisdom and also that you're going through a dna reprogramming at this time of your light codes those are being activated in other words just a long way of saying to help you become an inspired leader which i think is very positive Welcome group two. Thanks for tuning in your reading. I hope you guys are doing well. So go ahead and think about any questions that you might have or any concerns that you might have. And let's ask your spirit guides. Group two spirit guides, what message, messages do you have for them, please? I'm gonna use the archetype deck to see how your spirit guides are viewing you guys. Angel spirits and guides, show me how you view group two, please. How do you view them right now? Show me group two. We've got Rebel, okay. We've got Don Juan. Ooh. <laughs> How else are you seeing group two? Group two spirit. And then we've got Child Magical in Reverse. Okay. Well, first off, your guides are viewing you as somebody that challenges authority, you know, to affect social change. So you do it in your, in your light attribute, right? So rebel can sometimes sound like a bad thing, depending on who you ask. And in this case, they're saying it's a good thing because you challenge authority, you know, to create social change, to make things better. And you also reject spiritual systems that do not serve inner needs. So you're not somebody that's just going to go along with... Um, like a religion or just like a spiritual system because of political reasons or due to peer pressure. You're somebody that, you know, you reject all that and you focus on what serves people on the inside, where it really counts, what serves inner needs, okay? Then with the Don Juan card, they're seeing you as someone who spotlights your positive seductive qualities, okay? So they're not saying that's a bad thing. They're saying it's a good thing that you spotlight, you know what your seductive qualities are, you know what, you, what your talents are in that area and what your charms are and what people find charming and positive about you. And, and you use them to full effect to your advantage, okay? In a good way. And then with the child magical card, we've got, um, you know, this is a little bit less positive. It, 
they are saying that you are somebody who is pessimistic, you could be depressed or suffer with depression, um, and that you might be somebody that has a disbelief in miracles. Um, you know, you could be somebody that believes that energy and action are not required for growth. So maybe you're not somebody that always applies themselves as much as they could, okay? Maybe you're somebody that kind of expects things to be handed to you or um, just doesn't feel like applying as much effort as you could to things that you want or in order to grow. Maybe growth isn't um, always that important to you or not important in t or not that important to you in every area, okay? So it's a general reading, just take what resonates, but this is what your guides are saying about you. So what guidance do your guides have for you? Angel spirits and guides, for those who have tuned in for group two, what guidance do you have for them, please? What are your messages to group two? Leadership, number 51, Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is here to give you guidance. So your Holy Spirit is saying that, you know, you are a charismatic person. We saw that already with the Don Juan card. You are enterprising. Um, this is a card of motivation and authority. So it looks like you could be a little motivationally challenged at times, but that's why they're here guiding you today. And so their message is about that. They're encouraging you, okay? They're encouraging you to consciously and fully embrace, you know, any leadership roles that you are taking on at this time, okay? Or any leadership roles you're carving out for yourself. You know, they're saying that through your dedication, through your stability and discipline and focus, you know, that you actually do energize those around you and you become more recognized by those around you for your wisdom and your competence. And that's one of the things that people are attracted to you, whether you realize it or not, they're attracted to your, to your charismatic vibration, yes, but also your ability to take lead. And um, they will follow your lead as you, you know, as you show that you, you are competent. And that as a result of that, and then they realize that you are someone that can be trusted. So definitely the Holy Spirit is just guiding you and is the guiding force behind, you know, motivating you to inspire others. So if you've been feeling a little bit more motivated to inspire others or take the lead, it's because the Holy Spirit is behind you, pushing you to do that. And um, they're asking you to invite, you know, that energy and, and invite the energy of the Holy Spirit, you know, your higher power, whatever you want to call it. In this case, it's the Holy Spirit. This is your guide that is working with you right now. Invite them and it to help you you know, to, to be inspired yourself and to move you toward creative um, and spiritual bests. So basically what this card is saying that, um, you know, your, your main assignment right now is for you just to shine your bright light on the world. And you don't have to make apologies for your enthusiasm and you don't have to make apologies for your confidence, you know, as you lead others to a higher ground and as you shine your light. Just keep shining that light. Don't hide it under a bushel. But it's also a warning, you know, not to um, be overly ambitious or overconfident in this because um, if you put yourself on overdrive, you know, you can be disconnect disconnected from source or from, from your guides. And if you do that, then, then you actually do risk getting burnt out. So, you know, enthusiasm's like a fire. I did a couple of written readings over on my community page. So go to my page here on YouTube and click on the community tab and you'll see that I did a couple of readings you know in that section for you guys and this is one of the cards that came out so it's saying you know you guys can I've got some leaders that that are on my channel and they're asking you to continue to embody that role and but don't you know disconnect from source and don't get burnt out on it okay just you know enthusiasm enthusiasm is like a fire and it must be contained or it can consume you so um, spirit is just wanting you though to to lead with confidence get a note from the universe what other message does group two spirit guides have for them please what other message does group two spirit guides have for them please got a couple of messages
keep it simple. Old souls use words very sparingly, except of course for I, love, thank, you, wow, now, and cool. Wow, I love you now. P.S. Which sounds better than wow, now, I love you? Sequence is important. So keep it simple. And then this one came out too. What would love do? Do you know why it's so easy for us in the unseen to quickly pinpoint your whereabouts? You leave behind footprints of love, awe, the universe. P.S. The legend of Bigfoot continues. It was getting a love vibration from the Holy Spirit because that's number 51 and that breaks down to a six. And six is all about love and harmony, being present in the moment, being content, finding contentment on your journey. And so it's also about community spirit, which leadership entails like taking lead in a, in a community setting and that's a way of expressing community spirit so if you have any questions about how to take lead spirit is just simply saying keep it simple and and what would love do ask yourself that and that'll give you a good hint as to what you can do to take lead in situations in a positive way now for wisdom of the oracle other messages do the spirit guides have for group two please we've got peace in reverse number 23 are some of you struggling with change right change can be stressful but it's necessary for growth and growth is a good thing and this card is just guiding you and your guides are guiding you through this card to just know that you know, now is the time for, for calmness and to focus on your well-being despite um, these temporary conditions that may be being difficult for you. You know, even if things are sort of inharmonious, you know, at present in your life, you know, all that means is that you can and need to go within to sort of fine-tune yourself and your inner compass and your ability to love and your relationship with yourself. And because like you are your number one asset basically. So they're just guiding you to find harmony within yourself and don't look to the outer world for certainty. Okay, because you know, whatever's going on in your life, in the world and within you and around you, you know, this too shall pass. And you know, once again, your life will be filled with beautiful music. Next from the Fool's Journey. I I think that's what this deck is called. <laughs> the Fool's Wisdom. Okay, from Fool's Wisdom deck, what other messages does Group 2 Spirit Guides have for them, please? Other oh, messages. Number 11, the Playful. The Fool's Wisdom, have fun and be playful. Have fun and be playful. Don't take it all so seriously. Life's too important to take so seriously. And from the Dragon Oracle deck. What guidance does Group 2 Spirit Guides have for them, please? Or do Group 2 Spirit Guides have for them, please? Earth and Water Dragon creates the foundation for new growth. See, it's all about growth for you, Group 2. Don't be afraid of change. Change brings in growth. A fresh start is coming with new opportunities. Nurture your ideas and harvest the abundance. Nurture your ideas and harvest the abundance. A fresh start is coming. From the answer is symbol deck. fast step away from the crowd number 18 what this card is saying group two is that you know some of you well most of you if you're watching this and this is resonating you could be suffering from like too much talking okay I know I feel that way sometimes like talk 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 all the time and so this card is saying for you to um, you know recognize that that you might be on overload as a result of too much talking or listening to too many other people talk or you know that there are just too many ego voices or too many opinions that are vying for your attention and so that you know the voice of spirit is being drowned out as a result of that so you definitely need to take some time alone 
Um, that's what this card is talking about. You know, don't allow your ego to deny you the important check-ins that you need for to check in with your spirit. Your um, ego might try to convince you that you don't need to take time alone to, to be alone with yourself and your thoughts and with the spirit or that you can do it later, but that's just a trick, okay? Um, definitely make time um, to go within, okay? There's also this sense that some of you feel like you're constantly needing to have to cater to others and that even if you step away from others for a minute that everything will fall apart or your life will fall apart. You know, that's an exaggeration. Um, you know, your ego wants you perhaps to be eternally vigilant and that, you know, if you're not eternally vigilant that everything is going to go to hell. But this card is saying and your guides are saying that, no, that's not true. You can afford to step away. Everything isn't going to go to hell because you go within and give yourself the space that you need. Okay. You know, you're completely safe to go within and they're asking you to do that. This card also talks about your creator. Your higher power is watching over you and protecting you. And, and you don't need a million other opinions or anything to feel safe. You know, time alone to reconnect with the spirit will only validate that for you, okay? Because your higher power, your divine source um, will, will comfort you and will quiet your concerns and will address some of those outside opinions that kind of feel like they're running your life right now. So just take some time for yourself, even just a few minutes. Today, not tomorrow, don't put it off, today, take a few minutes and allow yourself to reconnect with your spirit. And so you will find time for everything else. And now from the Moonology deck. What else do group two's guys want to say, please? What are the messages do they have for group two? It's time to take action, new moon in Aries. Some of you are a water sign, maybe a water sign masculine, or you're dealing with the water sign masculine. Um, this is somebody that's supportive and cultured, tolerant and empathetic. Maybe this is somebody that's walked away from you. So I'm gonna get a clarifying card on that. Welcome group three. I hope you guys are doing well. Thanks for tuning into your reading. So your spirit guides messages to you. If you have any specific concerns or worries, go ahead and think about those now. Angel spirits and guides, can we get in touch with the collective of group three's guides and get helpful and healing guidance for them? And what messages would their guides like to give to them today, please? I'm gonna start off with the archetype cards. I just wanna see you know, generally speaking, how do your spirit guides see you, group three? For those who have tuned in for group three, we've got the shapeshifter in reverse. How does group three's spirit guide see them, please? We've got two more cards here. The pioneer and the lover. So basically they're seeing you as someone who can project any image that serves your personal agenda in the moment. So you might be a little bit too impressionable or a tad bit, um, you know, changeable in terms of style flexing. In other words, you um, change up your personal style to adapt to the people that you're around or your circumstances in a way that can um, be a little bit self-serving, maybe not the best. Just take what resonates but they also see you as a pioneer who is somebody that has a passion for doing and creating what hasn't been done before which is very positive positive. and they see you as a lover somebody that has great passion and devotion and unbridled appreciation of something or someone okay
So what guidance do group three's spirit guides have for group three, please? What guidance does group three's spirit guides have for group three, please? For the shapeshifter pioneer lover, what do they have to say? What guidance do they have? We've got invention. And this is coming from your creativity guides, number 26. So what your creativity guides are essentially saying is to turn lemons into lemonade. That's what they're wanting you to do here. They're asking you to, you know, rise to the challenges, make adjustments. Um, this is a card about adaptation. So they're asking you to adapt and to transform, okay? Um, maybe you're worrying a lot, but either way, they're saying not, you know, you're not to worry. They don't want you to worry because your creativity guides are helping you to transform those lemons into lemonade. And, you know, no matter what the circumstances are that you inherited or whatever problems that you're facing at present, you know, life is always a blend of good and bad, positive and negative. So they're just urging you to be grateful for the pluses in your life and um, be creative with the negatives, right? So they just want to help you to be inventive. We see that you're a pioneer. That's somebody that has a passion for doing and creating what hasn't been done before. So you definitely have the ability to do this, to, um, to transform, you know, adverse situations for the better. And they're also asking you not to dwell on like a, a lousy childhood or anything like that, because even though, you know, it really was lousy for those that resonates with, um, they want you to appreciate that that taught you to develop your skills of self, self-reliance and to, to be your best, your own best friend and to support yourself. So also they're saying, you know, with that card that if you're in, uh, in an unfulfilling job, um, be resourceful and start, you know, a business that you've been dreaming of for years or just do something about it. Don't stay in an unfulfilling situation. There is no reason for that. And so they're not asking you to, um, you know, be in denial or anything like that about the pain in your life, but they're asking you to use that pain as an incentive to move to higher ground, whatever that means for you. So they're here to serve you and they're with you, they're guiding you and, and they don't want you to be afraid of any obstacles or lemons in your life. They want you instead to invent better circumstances for yourself. And if you are ever in need, just ask them, ask your creativity guides for inspiration on ideas and they'll give them to you, okay? Because there's plenty to share. They have a lot to say. So um, basically when you get lemons, make lemonade is what they're saying with that card group three. Now let's get a card from the Wisdom of the Oracle deck. Angel Spirits and Guides for group three, what other messages do their guides have for them, please? For group three. We've got new life. Number 39. So this card did come out in reverse. I turned it up right so that you can see it better. And so that's the protection message. And what the protection message is about is just allowing yourself to acknowledge that in some area, you, some area you might be inexperienced and be gentle with yourself as you allow yourself to be, you know, um, to be new, to be either a student or a novice at something. Because this is about newness, it's a card of new life. So like a bud opening to become a flower, you have to be gentle with that, right? So be gentle with yourself is what they're saying. And it's okay for you to admit that you don't know something. Okay, that's perfectly fine. Just be where you're at now, okay? Wherever that is. You know, you, you might be at the beginning of something um, and you haven't quite hit your stride, whether that's in a new relationship, a new role of some kind in your life or in the workplace, whatever it might be, just know that, you know, you will hit your stride. So just let yourself be new. If you're new at something, let yourself be a newbie. And, and it's okay, there's no shame in that. And don't try to rush the learning process. You know, um, life loves you is what this card is saying. So be here now. And, um, you know, life has its own timetable for, for maturity. In other words, things will happen in divine timing. And when it's time for you to no longer be a novice or new at something, um, when it's time for you to be perhaps like the, um, the expert or whatever, then, you know, that time will come when it's ready. But right now, be where you're at, okay? You are supported. So 
going to get notes from the universe. Angel Spirits and Guides for Group 3, what other guidance do their guides have for them, please? You needn't worry. You need not worry. There's no one in your life who hasn't always loved you. They're all just learning how to show it. Big sillies, the universe. So it's more affirmation with that new life card that you don't need to worry about wherever you're at or whatever you feel that you lack, whatever has you worrying, you don't have to worry about it. Your guide's got your back. Let's get a card for my dragon oracle as well. Guidance to Group Three's guides. Top of them, please. We got the Black Dragon. Cocoons you so that your divine potential grows. The Black Dragon asks you to meditate, reflect, and undergo a metamorphosis. Some of you really are undergoing a metamorphosis. Next, we'll use the Fool's Wisdom. We've got the Trickster that forced its way out. Tricky Trickster. And it says, the Fool's Wisdom, get real, okay? I think that goes along with the Shapeshifter card. It's saying that sometimes some of you, um, sometimes some of you project an image that isn't truly authentic in order to serve your agenda. And this card is saying to get real, love yourself, love yourself enough to be yourself, okay? That's gonna bring more contentment and harmony into your life and it's gonna help you on your journey forward. Leave behind that which does not serve you. And that includes any inauthenticity. It's good to style flex and adapt but it's not good to, it's not good to lose yourself in doing that. From the Moonology deck. What does the Moonology deck have to say, please? More guidance for group three from the guides, please. Hard work is paying off, new moon in Capricorn. So keep up the good work. Whatever you're working on, it is paying off, group three. Get from the answer is simple as well. Turn on the light, turn on the light. It's number five. Number fives talk about, you know, the stress of growth, the stress of change. Change may be stressful, but it's good because it ultimately produces growth, which is, which is the goal, right? So your guides are just guiding you group three to you know, turn on the light, basically. Listen to your spirit and not to your ego, okay? Regardless of your circumstances, view your circumstances with the illumination of spirit. You know, don't focus on the shadows, but rather focus on the light. So this card tells you to, you know, just sort of ask questions like, you know, what's working? What is working in your life? Like focus on what's working and what you're learning and, you know, what is the process of improving? What does that look like? If there's some area you want to improve, what does that look like? Um, you know, know that everything happens, you know, at the right time, in the right moment. So don't focus on the shadows, focus on the light. You are progressing, you are transforming. This takes time, you know, be where you are when you're there and accept that, okay? When you look through the light of spirit, you know, you can clearly make out your path forward and how to illuminate yourself. 
and the ego focuses on fear and all appears dark but spirit you know turns on the light and helps you to see the value of the things that you're doing and the processes you're undergoing and it also tells you about you know the value of your experiences so with the light on you can see that all is actually good for you all is actually going going well for you group three Get healing from the fairies deck. What other guidance does Group 3's guides have for them, please? Parenting and children. Your life improves as you improve your relationships with parents, children, or both. Looks like there's some sort of a positive change that's happening in the area of parenting. It could be something unexpected that happens, but it is going to be a happy outcome, whatever it is. So it's going to happen between, like I said, a parent, a child, or both. And this card also talks about the value of families and, and relationships with parents and children. And it talks about, you know, dis discussing misunderstandings, sharing your, your feelings honestly with one another. You're just urged up to face up to any bad feelings that you have for family members and, and take the spiritual and human steps necessary for you to create healing, okay? So, um, also a new family member could be coming into your life. We did see the new life card, so somebody could be giving birth or a new family member by marriage or adoption. So whatever it is though, um, just know that you know you are being protected and guided as this is happening, this is a good thing. So you're safe and protective and you're going to enjoy this new family member. It could also be a family member with whom you've lost contact returning to your life, okay? So just open your heart up and feel compassion to all for all members of, of your family, especially the ones that have hurt you in particular. Is what is what your guides are guiding you to do. And what guidance does spirit have for you regarding your love lives or love, love in general? We've got an engagement card that fell out. It says your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. Well, first off, what this is saying to you, um, to you viewer, is that your guides want to reassure you that you will get married someday, okay? You will end up getting married. It is in the cards for you. Some of you are worried that you're never going to, you're never going to get married or you're never going to move your romantic life to the next level. This card assures that you will. So it's a very reassuring message that I'm getting regarding your love life from your guides group three. You know, deep romantic love is in the cards for you. Another message of this card is that of deep commitment, and it talks about being committed to yourself as well and focusing on self-commitment about, and you would do that through, you know, establishing boundaries about what you will and won't accept from someone or from a relationship and just developing and maintaining healthy boundaries in all life areas, such as, you know, your lifestyle and your home and your work, all life areas. And two, this card asks you to honor your, your self-commitment by taking you know, strong action and telling others how you feel when you need to by being, um, being honest and truthful and honoring your true feelings and communicating assertively. Not necessarily you know, arguing, just being assertive about your feelings and communicating when you have to. Telling people you know, truthfully how, how you feel about their behaviors. And so just by making this commitment to yourself, this helps you to manifest the love that's destined to come in for you. Okay, a committed love. It is the promise of marriage as well. So I'm going to pull a few tarot cards before I take it over to the extended and see what direction Spirit wants to go in with regard to further guidance for you, Group 3. Those who have tuned in to Group 3 Spirit, what other guidance do you have for them, please? We've got the King of Wands in Reverse, the Knight of Swords in Reverse, the Knight of Pentacles in Reverse. We've got a lot of people around you, so I think this has to do with family members and the work that you need to put in on those relationships. A family member could have left or you could have left a family um, behind to sort of go off on your own and be with yourself. Someone else has a family member who's blocked them 
or who isn't seeing the truth about your, your family relationship. Interesting. So what is that King of Wands doing here, Spirit? Clarify the King of Wands for group three. So we've got an Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, or somebody with that energy who has experienced, you know, plans failing or falling apart, somebody that thinks small and or has travel problems, and it's caused hurt, but I, I am seeing, you know, healing as a result of an apology or some other recovery after a loss, perhaps physical healing. So that's what that King of Wands is doing there. What is the King of Swords doing here, please, Spirit? It's actually the Knight of Swords. The High Priestess. The Knight of Swords is somebody who is running away from either an intuitive feminine or their own intuition. I think it's both. They um, are trying to avoid doing the work of self-love and they're trying to avoid being courageous um, on an internal level, okay? And that means facing, that means facing their fears and facing their basic instincts. It also has something to do with the fire sign. The parenting in children card came out, so I feel like for some of you, this is your energy or an energy of a sibling, and this is a parent's energy, but it's a general reading. Just take what resonates. But I am getting someone who is um, a little bit on the younger side or has a younger energy, who is quite an active kid, who is interested in um, new projects and adventures, who's a bit on the optimistic side, kind of a spark plug of a person with creative ideas. And it looks like they're at odds with this Knight of Swords. Knight of Swords is somebody who can be quite mean, can have sharp words, can be unfair, argumentative. And this is because this person is, you know, hiding something from themselves, blocking their intuition and not trusting themselves. They could be focusing too much on work or on a work partnership or even a romantic partnership. So as a result of that, they're not focusing on, they're not focusing on their other relationships. They're not giving equally to other relationships because they're too focused on their work. Interesting, so then the Knight of Pentacles, what's the Knight of Pentacles doing here?